Bah! I like big goats, and I cannot lie. I won't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing. Come to Jeff Rock. Now before we get into this video, I'd like to remind you that you can now receive a special discount on your next watch from Watchbox. Check the description below for a promo code exclusively for the good gentry. For those of you new to the channel, Watchbox are the world's leading, most trusted and respected dealers in pre-owned luxury watches. Onwards and upwards. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I thought we'd do something a little bit different and analyze uh, some of my favorite hip hop artists and their watches. Now, um, I should, well, of course, I'm gonna do resource check as we are discussing, well, this watch is gonna come up a lot in this video, uh, so I had to put on the day date. This is my second day date, as you guys know. Well, if you haven't seen my videos, I'll just recap for you very, very uh, quickly. I traded my former day date in that I bought last year uh, for this slightly later linen dial. It's the 18238, I think. Have I remembered the reference number? Nice, nice. So yeah, it's got the double quick set as my older one only had the single. Well, first of all, I should explain, I listen to tons of different types of music, predominantly, now don't laugh, predominantly uh, opera and drum and bass. Um, and I know I've said this before, yes, a bit of an eclectic mix. I listen to everything, but when I'm working out, there's nothing better than um, some really good hip hop music. Uh, my favorite rappers are Ice Cube and Mob Deep. Um, so a lot of American, uh, predominantly American artists, uh, having lived in New York for 10 years, can you blame me? Hip hop I think is, is a great genre to discuss because no other form of music has so many interesting watches, uh, especially because they are symbols of empowerment, of success, of status. Without further ado, I'm already rabbiting on too much. Uh, let's get into the first rapper and it is K-Trap from the UK. When he came out with this, quite recently he unmasked, so to speak, and uh, it's pretty obvious why he wore a mask if you follow his content. Um, and he's a big day date guy. I, it's even crept up in his lyrics. Uh, Rose Gold, I'm pretty sure it's the day date too. In Edgeware Road with LD, another fantastic artist, he wears a solid gold Daytona. I presume it's the 116528 champagne dial, 40 millimeter, absolute classic. I like K Trap Star because. Uh, and he said it in an interview himself, less is more. I think he's an amazingly talented chap. I mean, he, he has one of the most unique flows I've ever heard. Uh, and interestingly enough, he did in, in the un unmasking video, um, what was the track called? Oh, Big Mood, yeah, amazing. I love that stately home, really cool video. He actually wore a shirt with uh, mini Hugos, uh, a Dior shirt. <laughs> so I don't know if, if, if there's a connection there, but anyway, we cannot discuss hip hop music without mentioning the Day Date. The Day Date has one of the longest histories of involvement with this genre. Uh, you only have to go back to the greats of Tupac and Biggie. In fact, there's a story that Tupac, before they were adversaries, that Tupac actually bought Biggie's first Rolex Day Date. Back then, they were all 36 millimeters like me. If you've seen my top five gangsters and their watches, it is a watch that is synonymous with captains of industry, with success, with villains, um, the, 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 the streets and, um, presidents, obviously, because of the presidential bracelet. For me, I adore it because it, it's an extremely luxurious watch. K-Trap is somebody that embodies that British spirit of uh, entrepreneurship. It's obvious where he started and then now he's 
uh, doing music full time. It's extremely admirable, and it's, he's got there through hard work and making fantastic music. We're going to see this pattern again and again as we discuss these artists that they've made that transition. Um, and in doing so, obviously, his watch game has got even more, ex not eccentric, more flamboyant, shall we say. Uh, recently, I spotted him wearing a, I'm pretty sure it was an iced out Royal Oak. Uh, I can't tell you the reference because I couldn't really see it. And talking of iced out watches, I think that ties in quite nicely to a, a New York artist that has become extremely successful recently. We are, of course, talking about Cardi B, and she definitely has a penchant for these watches. In fact, her, is it, is it her husband? Uh, what's his name? Oh, Offset, thank you very much. I have to consult my, my wife. She is from New York after all, and uh, is a big uh, fan of Cardi B. He bought matching Patek Nautiluses, and hers was a chronograph. This is the reference 5980, the entire bracelet and the um, almost the entirety of the, the case of the watch was iced out. Now, I could be wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was aftermarket. It's not really my style, it's a little bit, obviously it's, it's not my style, but uh, I have to say it does suit her. But what's interesting is that she mentions Rolex predominantly, especially in her first commercial hit, which was Bodak Yellow. Uh, there's a lyric in there. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what? Hold on a second. I'm gonna get my, my karaoke obsessed friend Hugo to, to, if he's there. Come in, Hugo. Come in. Can you hear me, Hugo? Right, okay, take it away, Hugo. Only the real can relate. I used to live in the peas, and now my crib's got a gate. Rarely got charms like frosted flakes. So her first hit was 2017. She came in just as Patek was really becoming popular. In fact, in 2018, the following year, Patek uh, was the most mentioned watch brand in the hip hop game, overtaking Rolex, uh, which is a significant change. Now, I think the Nautilus is a great choice. Would I would I encrust it with diamonds? Obviously not, that's, that's not my cup of tea, but for her it works. Uh, it's also an extremely sporty piece, as you guys know, I've reviewed them, I've discussed the history. They're quite robust for such a horterology high-end piece. They hold their value extremely well up there with Rolex. I mean, no other two brands dominate auction houses and, and value retention like Rolex and Patek. This is just fact. So obviously gonna be the go-to choice for uh, artists that have gained that kind of success. In a way, the Patek Nautilus is the newer uh, president. Um, I'm not trying to take it, in, obviously, I adore the president, but it's it's the next generation's president, if, if that kind of makes any sense. Now, you can identify her model because of the, the sub-dial at the six o'clock, and of course, the chronograph pushers, which is a good way to distinguish it from the perpetual calendar. No, not the perpetual calendar, sorry, the annual calendar that I, that I reviewed uh, previously. Now, this originally came out in 2006, and it's probably the most expensive watch we're looking at here. Uh, day dates can range from, well, as you guys know, uh, from about 10 for older vintage models all the way to 100,000 and beyond, depending on, you know, materials, how blinged out it is, all the rest of it. Um, and the Patek is slightly in the higher bracket. So hers was, I'd say on the used market, probably about 60 to 70 and beyond. The Patek and the Rolex both share something very important. They were firsts, the Nautilus, obviously was game-changing for Patek. It, it transformed the brand from this kind of, well, I'm gonna say old money, old world style, very classical um, dress pieces to something for the modern age of super luxury. The Rolex had already uh, started that transformation. Uh, the day date famous in 1956 for introducing the first instantly changing day and date on the dial. A really great, one of my favorite complications. So let's go back to the UK for a while and discuss Blade Brown, one of my favorite artists. And he definitely, well, he's actually been quite instrumental in, in, in motivating me so many times. His music, I mean, the, the whole Bags and Boxes mixtape series, Financial Times, as the name implies, it's, it's very inspiring stuff. This is the kind of thing I put on to, to really motivate me to get work done. And he is an entrepreneur, and he said in multiple interviews, in fact, I watched one just the other day where he talked about 
Someone asked the question uh, about his lyric calling Cartier's dead watches and what he meant by that. And he uh, drops uh, name brands into his lyrics constantly. In fact, 12 Summers, is, which is an outstanding track, I highly recommend it. That's where the lyric about Cartier was included. In the interview that I saw, he explained how being an entrepreneur, I mean, that he's, he's got the uh, clothing line, I think he's just opened a club in Barcelona, this kind of stuff, and of course his music career. He was saying how certain watches can be investments. If you learn about it, you can actually make money. Again, not my style of, you know, I buy for enjoyment, I've always said that, but it, it was interesting to hear him talk about it. Uh, you can obviously tell he's a watch guy because let's look at what he chose. Uh, for that 12 Summers video, he had the AP 37 millimeter uh, double balance open work Royal Oak, of course, a, a favorite of mine, a favorite of the channel. Uh, his in rose gold. Now this is an extremely special piece indeed because it has these double balances working in tandem that, that dramatically increases the precision at the end of the day. I mean, I, we could get very, very technical, but I'm gonna save you all of that. Uh, it, it's a marvel of engineering and decoration because it is completely see-through. You can see the balance wheel uh, from both sides and the level of decoration, the beveling, the hand craftsmanship that has gone into producing that piece. It is a work of art. Now, I've actually talked about this watch before. What I really like about his choice is that he hasn't opted for the entirely blinged out version. He's just got the rose gold, you know, the standard, I, there, well, there's nothing standard about it. It is absolutely magnificent. But I feel when those pieces are blinged out, it detracts from the main attraction, which is everything going on in that movement. And now that is a watch that is highly sought after. And it's just like he said in the interview, it's gonna keep its value. He knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy. I deeply respect him. In fact, I, I think I, yeah, no, I did. I, I posted about him on the Instagram. Now, one of my favorite uh, lyrics of his uh, is in a, a daily duppy freestyle. He says, uh, just know there's a tech to protect the Patek. <laughs> Blade Brown, as far as I know, is the first artist to really like wear that watch. And uh, uh, you know, it's definitely something a connoisseur uh, that knows about AP is, is gonna recognize. Um, so obviously I got a, like a huge buzz when I saw that in the video. I just thought it was the coolest thing. It's cool to see more rappers not having to try so hard with all that bling and enjoy it for, for what it is. And Okay, I know it's been a bit UK centric, but let me just get this one rapper out of the way because right now, at the time of recording this, his work is kind of blowing up and he's also been seen wearing two APs, but this time, not the Schwarzkopf, this time the Castro. If you know what the Fidel Castro is, uh, two watches on one wrist, which is kind of quite interesting. And that was, of course, Dutch or Dutchavelli now. He happens to be the uh, brother of Stefan Don. What I do respect about him, that he's forged his own way and his music, especially, he just dropped surely the other day, incredible uh, music video. In fact, he was, <laughs> he was dressed as a postman um, because he delivers so many packages. Uh, and he uh, was saying he got 40 on the wrist and lo and behold, day date. So obviously another AP day date combination there. Going back to If Only You Knew, which I think is probably one of my favorite tracks this year so far. He wore two AP Royal Oak offshores on one wrist. Now I'm not sh quite sure which uh, references they are. Uh, they're obviously a lot bigger. They're a lot more sportier with the rubber straps he was wearing a turtleneck. And as you guys know, only real gentlemen wear turtlenecks, right? Um, no, sorry, bad joke, but you know what I'm saying. Let's talk about somebody from Philly. I am in Philly recording this as we speak, and uh, we have to mention Meek Mills. Now, Meek Mills uh, was featured in an article on Vice, vice.com, where somebody actually listened to over 200 of his songs and made a graph statistically tracking every time he mentioned the watch. And he mentioned watches a staggering 156 separate times, mostly AP and Rolex. So here we see a trend of AP and Rolex, again, consistently being mentioned. You guys know I adore AP. I, I almost wore my AP um, today as well, but it's a little bit too conservative. I just thought like that, yeah, this is more fitting. But 
uh, my point is, is that I have a profound respect for AP. They're still independent. I think we're going to see the Royal Oak, the President and the Nautilus uh, at the top every single time we analyze this genre of music. Right, so let's take it back to New York, the birthplace of hip hop. And we cannot make this video without talking about Jay-Z. Now Jay-Z, uh, to be honest, I could make a whole series, not just one video, a whole series on all the watches this guy has uh, worn over the years. He is unquestionably a watch enthusiast, a watch collector, a watch connoisseur. He's famous now, not just for music, but as an entrepreneur, as an investor, as a very successful businessman. Uh, again, we could spend all day just, just talking about his incredible um, history and portfolio if you want to get all business. But anyway, now before we analyze some of his key pieces, I want to just draw your attention to a quote that um, Jay-Z actually said himself. Now Jay-Z has said, everybody's supposed to stay in their lanes and not be neat. You're a rapper. You're supposed to rap, carry a boombox, wear chains, go to the club. That's all you do. What are you doing collecting art? What are you talking about? Wait a minute, you're getting out of the zone. People hate when people cross lines. Obviously that was taken from some kind of interview or a conversation, because uh, it, it very much seems like dialogue, uh, somebody would say off the cuff. But I think this quote is really interesting because it encapsulates his whole outlook, not just as an investor, but as a collector. I mean, this is a, this is a, a man, this is a gentleman that appreciates art. Uh, I, would, I would actually say like, he's one of the few rappers that have almost transcended hip hop into a whole nother sphere, almost, God, can you, can you call his, his hip hop intellectual? Can I say that? I think so, yeah. I, I Like some of his more recent concepts, the politics of struggle, it's really inspiring stuff. Anyway, I'm, we're, we're not talking about his music, uh, but this is important because it shows you the caliber of artists we're talking about. This is somebody very special indeed. Um, and this is why he's one of the greatest rappers of all time. I mean, you cannot make a list without talking about Jay-Z. Another interesting perspective about Jay-Z is how he uses watches. Uh, now, according to this article I found in GQ, now this is dated 2019, uh, Jay-Z handed out $40,000 Rolex watches as party invites. So VIP invitations arrived in the form of a package containing a bottle of Ace of Spades, uh, champagne and a rose gold Rolex Daytona. Uh, and this was with a chocolate dial. There's a great article on therichest.com about uh, Jay-Z's 10 most expensive watches. All icons, you know, all certified hits, but I love the variety. I love the fact that he's open-minded, not only got the the go-to rapper classics, but very sophisticated choices as well. The, the pièce de résistance, has to be, this is the Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime 6300G. It costs $2.2 million uh, in white gold, sporting a reversible case with one side with black dial and the other a white dial. Uh, it was first released in 2016, but its aesthetic very much reminds you of the extremely complicated pocket watches Patek used to do in, back in the day that kind of showed off how many complications they could fit into a, a timepiece. But this, of course, goes beyond that because it is a wristwatch. Its most alluring feature is that it chirps this quarter hourly chime known as the Grand Sonnerie, and it can keep the exact date to the year, now wait for it, the year 2100. So <laughs> I don't know how old Jay-Z will be when he actually needs to adjust the... Uh... <laughs> now this is the second evolution of the Grandmaster Chime uh, and only a handful of these were made. So extremely rare, extremely special. It's beyond refined in taste. It's like literally wearing a work of art on your wrist. It's like walking around with a Picasso. One thing I really admire about Jay-Z in particular is that he does kind of embody that New York state of mind, that. Uh, that go-getter attitude um, that is so quintessentially New York, you know, and having lived there for so long, 
Just something I really identify with, I really respect and admire. Right, so let's take it back to the UK and end on uh, one of the most successful rappers in the UK in the last couple of years. It is, of course, Fredo. Now, Fredo in uh, BMT, Big Man Ting, uh, sounds, me, sounds so stupid for me saying it. Um, now, Fredo in the track uh, BMT, let's pop over to Hugo just to see how it went. Hugo, come in, Hugo. BMT, my Roly, that's a Prezi, not a GMT. Thank you, Hugo. So obviously he knows about watches too. Why he feels the necessity to, to diss the GMT, one of my favorites, I don't know, but I think it was just to, to work that lyric in there and to kind of illustrate the point. He's a big AP guy, a big uh, day date guy, but one watch that I really found interesting was a blinged out Sky Dweller. Now I have been extremely critical of this watch in the past, as you guys know. I do think it's a bit lopsided. The case of the watch is too big for the bracelet. It's also too big in general. Having said that, it does fit him very well. And for somebody that has to travel internationally, the bezel, that ingenious, innovative way of manipulating the multi-time zone complication via the sliding, I think it, I have reviewed it, I should know this, the control bezel is really, really cool. I, I do like that watch. I kind of have this love and hate relationship with that watch. Personally, I just wish it was a bit smaller, but you can tell it's the Sky Dweller because of that off-center uh, disc to display the second time zone. Now, I've never seen a blinged out one of these. So this was the first time I, you know, at first I didn't know what it was, but then I saw the, the, the second time zone. I'm in two minds about aftermarket gem setting like that because I know, and I've seen from experience, I have a friend of mine who collects very blingy Rolexes and uh, I've, I've been to stores when he's bought them new from the Rolex store and I cannot deny that they are masterfully done. I mean, they employ their own gemologists in, the Rolex factory, they really are experts. So the aftermarket options, in my opinion, are never quite as good. Now, I love that watch in terms of its innovative technology that Rolex introduced. I've, I've never seen that kind of complication manipulated by bezel that way. I think it's very clever, but it is disproportionately executed in terms of the case. My feelings have not changed about the Sky Dweller. I don't think it's the worst Rolex by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, you know, I've talked about the, uh, what was it, the Leopard? Uh, do you remember that? Yeah, it's crazy. The Daytona with the Leopard skin up, yeah. And then of course there's the Yachtmaster 2, which I've never really understood why you need that complication. Unless of course you really race yachts, then by all means. But anyway, let's stick to the positive. I like the fact it's slightly offbeat choice. I'm not a fan of the, the blinged out entirely encrusted bracelet and case possibly going to hurt the resale value but then again you know if you've got Fredo money Fredo success what does it really matter he enjoys it and that is the most important thing at the end of the day uh, so I kind of props to him for, for going a little bit left field it would be nice to see more rappers embrace obscure stuff you know like real watch enthusiast choices now if you notice there are a lot of UK rappers in this list not just because of my own background Born, born in London, very proud. In fact, actually, uh, uh, K-Trap, uh, I think he's from South London. Um, Dutch Chevelli, he's from Hackney. And I'm, I think Fred is from West London. So yeah, there is obviously, I, I have my personal preference, right? But it is more prevalent seeing watches in UK rap videos constantly compared to the US. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below, especially your favorite rappers. I'd love to hear that. And any watches they wore as well. Right, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. We all work hard for our money. So when it comes time to spend it on a luxury watch, the best way to take your money furthest is to buy pre-owned. With some dealers, this might be risky, but not at Watchbox. As a former customer, it was only natural I became part of the Watchbox family. I fell in love with the easy, safe and professional manner in which they do business. So why are they so highly regarded? Authenticity is always guaranteed. 
every watch comes with a two-year warranty and Watchbox has their own in-house Swiss trained expert watchmakers. They have a global presence and an unrivaled selection. It's simply the best way to buy, sell and trade your watches from the comfort of your own home anywhere around the world with a team comprised of passionate watch enthusiasts. As an Urban Gentry viewer, you can also benefit from this wonderful partnership with Watchbox. They are generously offering all Gentry members and viewers exclusive discounts on their next purchase. Please check the description below for the promo code to enter on their website. Watchbox is not just the best option to consider, it's the future of buying and selling watches online.